Even if you knew nothing about the business and financial world, which is totally fine by the way, you would probably know that cryptocurrency has completely taken over the space in 2020 and now in 2021. As of recording this video, Bitcoin, the world's most valuable cryptocurrency, is currently trading for around 60,000 US dollars per one coin, and Ethereum, the second most valuable cryptocurrency in the world, is hovering around the $4,000 mark. That's just for one. Cryptocurrency has seemingly come out of nowhere over the last year or so. This has led to thousands of new cryptocurrencies hitting the market, well, just about every day. And today, there is pretty much a cryptocurrency for everything. Sports teams have cryptocurrencies. You even have cryptocurrencies from other businesses and companies. And recently, the Federal Reserve announced that it would begin developing something in the cryptocurrency space as well. So pretty much everyone and their mother is getting behind cryptocurrency right now. We've got cryptocurrency buyers and cryptocurrency developers all throughout the world. We've also seen the rise of meme coins over the last year and a half as well. Meme coins are essentially designed to mock cryptocurrency in general. Cryptocurrencies and meme coins are beginning to change though. Just last week, we saw the rise of Squid Coin. And as of recording this video, we've also seen the fall of Squid Coin. Squid Coin is a cryptocurrency that is based on the Netflix show Squid Game. And over this weekend, Squid Coin was worth thousands of dollars. So today I wanna to talk about Squid Coin. I wanna talk about meme coins and what they mean for the future of cryptocurrency. What does Squid Coin's rise and fall mean for the cryptocurrency market? And are we going to continue to see moments like this for the foreseeable future? So if you are a current or future cryptocurrency investor, you might wanna stick around till the very end of this video to learn more about this squid coin, what happened, and what it means for the future of crypto. But before we get into all of that, my name is Nate from Minority Mindset News, and if you like this video, make sure to smash that thumbs up button below, and hit that notification bell too, that way YouTube shows our videos to way more money minds around the world, we can keep making videos just like this one. Cryptocurrency has been on a massive run in 2020 and now in 2021. I mean, one Bitcoin back in January of 2020 was worth around 7,000 US dollars. Today, that same Bitcoin would be worth around $60,000. And with the rise of Bitcoin, we've seen a ton of other cryptocurrencies gain fame. Coins like Ether, XRP, Dogecoin, and of course the new Shiba Inu. And the rise of cryptocurrencies today makes a ton of sense. As the stock market and other markets around the world began to crash back in 2020, the world was scared. And when investors are scared, they start to put their money into different assets. They put money into assets that they feel are going to be valuable beyond just dollars. Cryptocurrency is considered an asset like this because it is not dependent upon a government. Our traditional dollars are backed by the US government. But if inflation gets any worse and our US dollars begin to lose some massive value, well, investors aren't gonna to wanna to put their money there anymore. They're going to want to invest in things that are going to make them money. This is where Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies come in. Cryptocurrencies can be used all throughout the world. You don't need to exchange it for another currency first. And Bitcoin in particular is protected against inflation. There's only 21 million Bitcoins that can ever be made. Versus our US dollars, well, the Federal Reserve can print as many dollars as they want. So a lot of investors are turning to cryptocurrencies as a way to protect themselves in uncertain times. Like I said, when investors are fearful, they start to invest in alternative means. And just in general, cryptocurrency is a measure of the technology that we have today. I mean, so many things have come from Ether and its technology. With Ether, you have more than just a coin that you can go out and spend. You have what's known as NFTs or non-fungible tokens. Those work because of the Ethereum technology. Recently, cryptocurrency has begun to expand, so much though that now it is a part of some video games. Spending real world money in video games is nothing new. There are game developers that literally make plans upon transactions within video games. So now you're not just buying the game, you're buying all of the downloaded content that can come with the game. These are things like skins and additional content that was not included in the original game. And if you think that's silly, well, it might be. 
But games are a billion dollar industry and video game companies know that people want exclusive things within games. I mean, that is the whole argument behind NFTs. When you buy an NFT, you are buying exclusive rights to a digital work. You now own that piece. It's like having art. And in video games, it works the same way. When you play a video game, the game will essentially give you a certain amount of things. These are things that every single player has access to. But you can also buy a few items for a few bucks at a time. Some video game developers do this a lot more than others. I remember just a few years ago that the game developer EA came out with Star Wars Battlefront 2. I'm a big Star Wars fan. But here's the problem. That game had a ton of what's known as microtransactions. Players had to actually go and spend their real world dollars in order to unlock exclusive things. And this was everywhere within the game. This created a ton of backlash. And now video game developers are pretty careful about the things that you can purchase within the game. And if you're a big gamer, then you know all about the battle royale games like Fortnite and Warzone. These games are essentially free to play, but within those games, everything needs to be bought and you buy it with real world cash. And anyone can do it. You literally just link up a credit card or a debit card to your video game account and you can buy whatever you want with in-game. These are called in-game purchases. So this has been going on for years now and the crypto market is now beginning to take cryptocurrency and put it into games as well. This brings us to Squid Game and this new cryptocurrency. Now, if you're not familiar with Squid Game, don't worry, I'm not going to spoil anything, but Squid Game is essentially a Netflix show that brings a group of people together so they can participate in child games. They play these games in order to earn money. And the games are simple enough, but if you lose the games, you die. Since its launch, it has become the most popular show in Netflix history. It had over 100 million people streaming it at one point. So exposure for this show was huge. It had a ton of people watching it all at once. And this ultimately led to spawns of people creating games based on the show. A lot of these games were free to play, but one creation of the game was not. This particular Squid Game could only be played if you bought a certain number of tokens. If you bought in at a certain amount and you actually won, then you would get even more squid tokens. This was the only way to play this game. And we've already established that people will pay just to play video games. I mean, ask your 13 year old nephew how many skins he has in Fortnite. The more people that paid to play this game, that meant the value of this squid coin was going up. And by the end of Friday, it would cost you around $2.22 to purchase a coin in order to play this game. And that was already pretty crazy. I mean, you had a coin that was basically worth nothing to being worth around $2.22 in a span of around 24 hours. That rivals the value of some of the world's largest cryptocurrencies. But this story gets even crazier. Over the weekend, more and more people started to discover this game and it got even more popular. That meant more people were now buying coins in order to play this game. That sent the price of this squid coin up over 230,000%. And by Monday, it would cost you around $2,850 per coin just to play this game. And remember, part of the reason for this is because buying into this coin meant that you could play this game exclusively. And the more and more people that played it, the more exclusive it became. But then as of Monday, this squid coin crashed. It dropped 100% in value, going from around $2,856 per coin to less than a dollar in about 24 hours. This is what happened. The people that developed this game and were collecting this crypto stored all of the crypto in a wallet. This wallet was hosted on a site called Tornado Cash, which is used to hide and can privatize all transactions on a blockchain. So essentially any money that moves in and out of that wallet is completely untraceable and nobody really knows that it's happening. Well, this is exactly what happened. Once the value hit a certain amount and the developers were ready to cash out, they essentially did that and they pulled all of this money out of that wallet leaving anyone that actually bought coins for this game with nothing. Yahoo Finance predicts that there was around $2.5 million in this wallet, and the developers pretty much walked away with it. As for the game, well, it is gone. All traces of it online have been deleted, and any posts from the account on Twitter have also been deleted. 
And to be fair, some members in the cryptocurrency community were warning other investors and players of this game to stay away from this squid coin, warning that something like this might happen. So with all of that being said, is this going to happen again? Are we going to see another squid type coin come up in the future and affect the cryptocurrency market? Well, one of the things you need to understand about cryptocurrency is that it is a solution to a problem that we have in society. As I said before, traditional currency has a ton of problems, but it's the way that we've always done things. And Bitcoin was created to fix a lot of those problems, especially when it comes to inflation and being able to use it on a global scale. Ethereum is the exact same way. NFTs basically work on the Ethereum blockchain. They work based on the Ether technology. And the problem that they fix is that a lot of artists and creators out there were not getting paid well enough for their art and it was just hard to sell art online. But with NFTs, it makes that process super, super easy. Before, if you were to create a song and you wanted to legitimately sell it online, you would only have a few options. Streaming is one of those options and one of the other options is to go directly to a label. Now you can sell exclusive rights to your songs through NFTs. You can do the same thing with paintings and other forms of media. So crypto is here to solve some of those traditional problems that we have. But the other thing about cryptocurrencies is that their technology is completely open source, which means to create a blockchain and to actually create a coin, all of that data is public online, which means anyone can make a cryptocurrency. Now this has a ton of benefits. If one company or person starts to develop a cryptocurrency but has to stop for whatever reason, that allows someone else to come in and finish what they started. But there's also nothing stopping someone from creating a cryptocurrency, selling it to people, and then just immediately drawing all of those coins and dollars back. This is what happened with the Squid Game Crypto. And cryptocurrencies are super new when it comes to the investing world. I mean, the stock market has been around for over 100 years now. Cryptocurrencies, well, they've only been around for a decade. So for a lot of people, it's hard to trust what is legit in the cryptocurrency world and what is not. We obviously know about Bitcoin and Ethereum, but those cryptocurrencies are expensive. And buying those right now might not get you the same rate of return as it would be to buy a up and coming cryptocurrency like Dogecoin or Shiba Inu. For Bitcoin, going from $50,000 to $55,000 is a big jump. But for brand new coins, going from less than a cent to around $10 per coin is an even bigger jump. And at the end of the day, investors want to make money and use their time effectively. So they're going to want to invest in something that gives them that big rate of return. That's why we've seen a ton of cryptocurrencies pop up in the last year or two. And to date, there are now over 10,000 cryptos around the world. Some cryptocurrencies actually provide value while others are just meme coins. Like I said in the beginning, meme coins are designed to make fun and mock cryptocurrencies. A lot of these meme coins do not solve real world problems. So their value is kind of up for debate. And the crypto market is super volatile but investing in a meme coin is even more risky. So are we going to see more cryptos and meme coins that are very similar to this squid coin? Well, the short answer is yeah, probably. When it comes to money, there are certain people out there that are just looking to make a quick buck. The creators of this squid coin were in it for just that. They wanted to flip the value of their currency and they capitalized on a market and a show that is booming right now. The same thing happened with stocks way back when. People were investing in a stock that they'd never even heard before and they were doing it because they were being told that it was the next big thing. I mean, if you've never seen The Wolf of Wall Street, first of all, go watch that movie. But second of all, this is exactly what was going on. So when it comes to investing, investors have to be very careful about the money that they put in and really understand the fundamentals behind what they're investing in. Investing isn't guaranteed, but not knowing a single thing about your investment is super, super risky. So we're most likely going to see coins like this pop up in the foreseeable future, but that does not mean you need to invest in them. The key takeaway here, especially if you want to become a cryptocurrency investor, is to understand why you're investing in something and understand exactly what you're investing in. You need to know the ins and outs of your investment. 
What real world problem does this coin solve and why do you want to buy it? Start by answering those questions and if you can't answer those questions, well, then you probably shouldn't make that investment. And remember, I am not a financial advisor here to you. Make your own judgment calls when it comes to investing and do what is right by you. But for now, the squid coin is gone. It had its massive 72 hour run where it went from $0 to over $2,800 and then disappeared. But like most things in the business and financial world, squid coin just broke the mold. We'll be seeing a lot more coins pop up just like this squid coin in the foreseeable future. So while squid coin might be gone, it will definitely be back just in a different form. But now I want to hear from you on this issue. What do you think about this whole squid coin saga, if you want to call it that? And what do you think about meme coins in general? Are we going to see more instances of this happening in the future? Or will the cryptocurrency market begin to level out within the next few years? Whatever your thoughts are, leave a comment below before you go. But that is it for today's business and financial news breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button below. Keep hustling, Money Minds, and I'll see you all in the next one.